Father, and I'm going to take it to all for the blood. I'm trying to make it even from the other world. I promise I'll make a better intro later. This is the intro for the dog of blood. Thunder Rosa eating taco. Hey guys, guess what? I'm with Dustin who needs to go work out and I got him the driest f***ing chicken tacos in the world. What the f*** is that? <laughs> what if, I said cheese. They salsa, didn't? Salsa, all that stuff. No, you said just cheese. You didn't cheese. ask for salsa. You can have some of my this stuff. Isn't, this is in Texas, okay? No, it's, this is New Orleans. How is the chicken? <laughs> it's probably as dry as my granny's ass right now. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> he needed to go to the gym, so I had to get some tacos. So I went with Felipe's tacos, which definitely are not up to his. He's like, so I will have to do this again in Austin, Texas at um, El Dorado Cafe so they can feed you like they fed Mark, Mark Henry. Is that right? Yeah, but he's not invited. No, no, no he's not invited, no. no mm, it's just no. you and me. Okay. You What's and me. up? Hey, Dustin. This is, like, very hard because this is, like, my, my coach, and it's kind of hard to, like, Record your coach because he's because you're so I'm intimidating. By you. Why am I intimidating? Because <laughs> you're just like you know, a legend. You know, I don't know. You don't feel like you're a legend, like, no, honestly? I am. I feel like one. How, how does it feel to be a legend? A legend, pretty cool. the, and then the son of a legend, and then yourself a legend. That Did feels... you ever you ever thought that was going to be like that? No. Was it difficult when you're growing up? Yeah. As a second generation? Yeah. I'll, I just wanted to be like my dad and kind of fill his shoes, and that's impossible. Can't do that. <clears throat> Nobody can. You can't fill your mama's shoes. Nobody can fill. No, I can. Definitely, I can. Our parents' shoes, you know? All we can do is kind of go out and spread our wings and make our own way. I heard like carve our own path. I know you told me your dad didn't want you to be a wrestler. Yes. What makes you want to be a wrestler? What makes me want to be a wrestler? Why? From everything in the world, you could have anything to be. Why do you want to follow your father's footsteps? Because I love it. I love pro wrestling since I was little. I mean, were you watching pro wrestling when you were little? Mm mm. You weren't? Mm mm. So you didn't want to be a pro wrestler? No, I wanted to be a. I want to be a uh, dancer, singer, Selena. No, 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 no. Sure. Yeah, you wanted to be Selena. So, uh, well, it's I, not the only shirt you own is Selena. <laughs> There's just chain no, shirts every day. Oh, there's a new one. Don't hey. Texas. Yay! I, I watch a couple of documentaries about you. About me? Yeah. yeah there's about a lot. There's a lot. Me? There's a lot of stuff on YouTube about you. Not a lot of what? stuff that I didn't know. How messed up I am. Well, that that was one. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk about that. Your journey as a young man, trying to find yourself as a wrestler and also as as as, a, as who who you are now. Yeah. Let's talk about that. That's tough. That's hard to explain. When you uh, when you grow up in the house of a legendary father, Dusty Rhodes, it's everywhere you go, you're his son. That's very hard. That's hard to live up to. You can't, you can't, it's, it's impossible. But I tried anyways, right? <clears throat> I tried my hardest to, to mimic him, to do the same kind of things and it did well. And he named me the natural because I just, I was born for pro wrestling. I loved it, right? Mm -hmm. So I ran with that and became very good at it but I was still living kind of in his shadows until um, him and I had a falling out, which kind of sucked, right, for mm -hmm. five years. And I got fired f from WCW <clears throat> and got the call from Vince McMahon to come up and try a new character. But the WCW, was he the, he was a booker, right? Yeah. Some of the first, your first opportunities uh, in pro wrestling, was he, like involved in, in the whole thing? I started in Florida. Mm -hmm. Okay, he sent me to, his mentor was Eddie Graham, and his son is Mike Graham. Mm -hmm. And Mike Graham trained me in, in wrestling and Steve Kern. So we were uh, working every night, and mm -hmm. I was learning in front of people, whether it be seven people or 20 people, 
making $20 a night, working for two years straight. It was the best time of my career. So you had to pay dues in order yes. to be where you, yes. you are now? Yes, $20 a night. 40 on a good one in the Bahamas, but that was once a month. So I got me some little sexy five by seven photos and I sold the shit out of those and I make, <laughs> make enough money for beer. I had some laying on the couch like this. Yes. <laughs> Jeans and cowboy hat. I'm just like, what the f am I doing? That would be like the OnlyFans back then? Yeah. Well, I had clothes on, though. Hey, and still, you can me, sell it. Me and my wife just took a, did a photo shoot. I heard, I saw that. Oh, when we, we can talk about it in a little bit. Oh, <laughs> Can't show those to nobody. 20 bucks a night, though, for two years. And that was the best time in my almost 34 year career. Until now. Twenty dollars a and night. Partying. Nineteen years old, getting in everywhere. Than you can possibly imagine. Oh my God. This is great taco talk. <laughs> this is some real <laughs> stuff, guys. It was the best. Well, you were stud. Ever. You're I telling was. me you were stud. I was. I was. And then I grew up. <laughs> so you started in Florida, and then what led you into uh, how? How did everything progressively start getting better for you? Did you earn, did you, like you had to earn it pretty much? I did, and then Barry Wyndham's brother, Kendall Wyndham, right? Mm -hmm. Dad brought me up to NWA, it was before it was WCW. Yes. And he put us together as a tag team. No contract, nothing, uh -huh. still getting But he did go shop and get me some clothes because I really just had rags. I didn't have, I was just living in mm -hmm. workout pants and shirts and shit like that. So he bought me some gear, so I started tagging with Kendall, and that lasted about eight months. And then Dad went to WWF, and he was there for a while. Went back to Florida, went to Tennessee, USWA. Um, and then Vince called me the first time to tag with my dad against the Million Dollar Man and Virgil. Yeah, I saw, so I that, saw was that. that was my first WWF appearance. I think that was 90, 1990, or 91, one of the two. Mm -hmm. That was fun. I stayed there about six months and then went back to Florida to start up Florida Championship Wrestling under another name, uh, P uh, PWF, I think it was. And that's where I won my first title, Florida Heavyweight Championship. And after that, WCW. And I went to Japan a few a few times, all Japan. I probably went seven or eight times to all Japan. How long did you stay there? A month at a time. I love Japan. That was fun. Tell me um, one, of, one of your most like fun experiences in Japan. <laughs> I'm trying not, to, trying not to go too deep down the rabbit hole here. I know, I know. That's why there I, was this, I can there see was there was this bar called Pip's Lounge. It was right across, it was in Rapungi and it was right across. Oh, you just said Rapungi and we're in trouble. Right across from in the Hard Rock Cafe. Yep. And you go downstairs and it's a bar and they love the wrestlers, right? But me and Dr. Death, Terry Gordy, Doug oh. Furness, there was a couple more in there and we got so fed up. And they had this big rhino sitting in the corner on his ass, st standing straight up. We pulled the rhino down and held the sides while each of us got on and we tried to buck them off in the bar. They moved all the tables, drunk as shit, fighting. The Marines were coming in. Me and Gordy and Dr. Death and fist fighting just about every night down in Rapungi. It was great. It was so much fun. That sounds like a Rapungi story. Yeah. That's a PG. PG Rapungi. PG, PG, PG version. <laughs> no, Rapungi be wild. Yeah. Even now, open 24-7. All the guy jeans are there. Everybody get messed up. He's a national treasure, I guess. Tell you guys, he's oh, a I national like treasure. I like that. <laughs> but you're a national yeah, treasure. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You are. Yeah, I know I am. You are a national I know. treasure. I know. I remember the first time I met you. I'm like, I'm a, 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 I'm a,
Because you care for like, a lot of the talent, you know? And the other company is different. You don't get to coach. Not at all. I did with Alana. I did, you know, occasionally before the shows and stuff like that. But coaching here is way different than producing there. Mm -hmm. I call it producing there. We call it coaching here. Um, it's real strict. They got to do exactly as they're told, basically. There's lots of things they can and cannot do. And it sucks for them because they can't spread their wings and do some really cool stuff like you ladies do. Mm -hmm. They're so strict. They can't do that. No, we're not going to do that, Dustin. That's on you. And then I, you know, if they do it, I get in trouble for it. What? Yeah. So you're very, you were very limited. Very limited. It's not the same there. It sucks. It's hard. How did you last it so long being a character like Gold, Goldust? Let's talk about that. It's like that. That's another thing that I was um, on the. There's a different documentaries I was like uh, listening about you. Is you know you enter as as you with your cowboy hat and. And that, and then they're like, no, nah, never mind, man. We don't like the shit here. I mean, a lot of people think that could be a rib, mm -hmm. like Dad in the polka dots. You know that that's a rib, but he got it over. He got it over because he's Dusty Rhodes, the American Dream, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't think of it that way back then because I was young and I just wanted to do something other than try to fill my dad's shoes. Yes. I wanted. I saw this as an opportunity. Had no idea what any of the things he was telling me meant, like androgynous and things like that, until I hung up the phone and would look in the dictionary and figure out what <laughs> did I just sign up for, right? <laughs> But after, after all that, I said, you know what, let's give it a try. And it was, <clears throat> he was 110% behind the character and hands-on and gave me a lot of rope. Mm -hmm when everybody else was like the click and things, you know, mm -hmm. trying to get people fired and whatnot, didn't matter. He was going with me. So he let me take my time and find the character. Did you? And it took about seven months. Were you the one who created the full face and the, the, the wig? And he like wanted the wig and all that in like Adrian Adonis makeup. Right, mm -hmm. which was like some pink blush and stuff. I wanted paint. Mm -hmm. He agreed to that. I was a big uh, fan of paint because you know watching Sting all those years in WCW, I mm -hmm. wanted to paint my face. So he was okay with that. But we made it to where at the beginning it was just gold face, two black eyes, and black ears. It looked really out there with a wig and all the stuff. And it took me six, seven months to to, to finally find this character. I did not want to do the, the touchy step over the line stuff. Mm -hmm. And that now looking back on it is what I tell my students is you have to step over that scary line mm -hmm. and out of your little bubble if you're going to make something, if you're going to be a success story. And I did, finally. And it was a long time, six, seven months, and Savio had been trying, Savio Vega was such a good worker, man. And he, I, I give him a lot of credit for bringing gold dust out. And he kept wanting, like, for weeks and a couple months for me to just do these things that I wasn't comfortable with. And we finally, I finally broke down in, in Madison Square Garden, huge Puerto Rican community. Um, he's there. I'm the intercontinental champion. We go in. I finally tell him, okay, fine, let's do it. So... And it was so simple, but I built it up into my head to be so, I'm against that, I can't do that, that's not me, whatever. I was scared, right? So as soon as I, as soon as what we had talked about is me going behind him and rubbing up and down his chest, that's it, right? I was really terrified to do that. You never- that something that I just would not do. I did not do Not even do playing that. around? No, did not think that that way. And I did it. And he turned around, and I just ran out of the ring. They f I had not got any reaction for that six, seven months until right then. And it was like they were screaming every profane name that they could possibly call me, throwing 
And I was like, holy f And I'm looking at Savio in the ring, and I'm staying away from the the rails because they're, they're stepping over, and they're spitting, and they're cussing, <gasps> and they're, like, this was 90, 95. What? Not this was not 1995 or right 1996. Wow. And I rolled back in, and I'm looking at him on the corner, and he's laughing, and I'm like, mother And we lock up, and he takes me back to the corner, and he's laughing, and I said, why are you laughing? See, I told you it would work, I told you it would work, just listen to me. So we're gonna do another one now. And I'm like, oh God, what are we gonna do now? <laughs> <clears throat> we said, back me up to the corner. Mm -hmm. I backed him up to the corner, I turned around, and I stuck my ass right in his <laughs> okay? Counting, counting, counting. I start rubbing my ass on his. Dick. He pushed me in the back. I turned around. I gave him a little kiss, and I rolled out of the ring. They, Goldust was created. Scary, scary things. Very simple. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to step over that line, and that's what kept me from succeeding until that point. And once I did that, I was like. Let's go all in on this summer. Yeah, I, I mean, I see you now, and I'm like, I, I can't even, you know, picture that, picture you like that, you know. And then um, it when, was when, some crazy, crazy stuff. And me and Booker T, when we got together, it was like. Oh yeah, I was watching some of those promos. That was very, very funny. It's, it's the odd couple, <laughs> right? It's completely. Two opposites in the ends of the spectrum yeah. right there. Goldust and Booker T, this tough guy from Houston, whatever. Us coming together and it just clicked. It clicked so good. And after two or three weeks, we tore up the scripts. They would write us scripts. We would look at them, the first couple of scripts, you know, we did them just like it, but they wanted more. They wanted more every single week. And I was like, this is supposed to be a one-time deal. Us, us doing the Rock's first movie, you know, mm -hmm. uh, at the movies with Booker T and Goldust. And, and we're talking about Scorpion King, mm -hmm. right? And then they loved it. They wanted to do another, another, another. And it just got over. And pretty soon, I'm just playing off of him. He's playing off mm -hmm. of me. I'm making funny noises. We're remembering a few little bits in our script and things like that, but we're bringing out our own stuff. And that's that's what all the young kids don't understand today when they're handed a script. You, you have you have to make make it your own. Does I always, yeah, I always hear like, that. I could write you a whole script. Yes. I wouldn't want you to do that word, word for word. I would want you to put it in your words and hit the points that are kind of highlighted in it yeah. and bring out your magic. Yeah, he always gives me crap because, you know, I'm still, like, I'm not used to being Thunderosa like that, you know, and especially babyface. And you always tell me, like, you got to make this your own. It, it sounds better, like, with more emotion and, and with more passion. And um, I, that's one thing that you bring, even when you're in the, in the ring, like, in the last couple <clears throat> months that I've seen you wrestle, like, you always bring something different. You are, like, honestly, like, when you watch a TV match and you come out, you're, like, that match that I will have my students watch. You see how he's doing it? That's perfect starting. You know? Yeah. You, you've been doing it for so long, and I feel like sometimes, um, like, new generations of wrestlers, they don't understand what you bring to the table because they don't understand you, and you don't understand the passion and, and where you're coming from, you know? It's, it's, it's a... It's starting, starting to become a lost art. Yeah. There's only a few of us left. Yeah. The old-timers that can still get in there and give it somewhat of a go and do well, and I'm one of them. Yeah, There's you are. not very many of us left. And I, I, I wanna share this, like, remember when you were like taping my, my hands for my match? Yeah, my terrible tape my... job. No, 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 but it doesn't matter because you were, you have been so important in my career in the last two years, like you have no idea. Like, anytime I fell down or anytime like, I doubted myself, you, I didn't have to tell you anything. You know what I was going through. You know how I was feeling. And we have had really yeah. deep There's conversations. A couple times she's gotten mad at me, walked yeah. away, and got upset. I'm Mexican. I do that. <laughs> I'm just that's, passionate that's about. Just it. it. I love crazy, yeah, you loud do. women. Yeah, you do. We know that. <laughs> Everything that you you still have to bring, and you still bring to us, I appreciate it all the time. So you know this. You girls, right? Mm-hmm. 
there's a lot of people that do reach out to me here and want help, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And want knowledge. Yes. But from day one here, it started with Brett. It started with Brett and B Priestley. Mm -hmm. They had a hell of a match. We went on from there. We started hiring more girls. I was diving in with them, and I just started having training sessions with them mm -hmm. just because I wanted to. Because I wanted the women's division to get somewhere other than where it was at. And WWE has done a good job at that. But I want to see us, AEW, do that, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not because I don't like the guys, but I truly, truly see the desire in you ladies and how you want to make it to that next step. And that means a lot to me because I like the challenge. I like that challenge to get you guys there in any way possible that I can possibly lead you to success. I want to get you there because I care. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people may think that's weird, but I truly do. He does. And I found a calling. And I love to train with you girls. I love to talk with you. I love to mentor you. I love to listen to your problems. I love to hug you, to fucking, if you're crying, whatever it is, uh, it means a lot to me. Some more than others, like you. <laughs> you're all working hard and you all deserve a chance. And I think that's important for women today. We're always talking equality, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's important. Um, now we got a match on Dynamite. Now we got a match on Rampage every single week. Slowly but surely, you know, and there's lots of, there's, there's been lots of main events. So there have been steps forward with that. I appreciate that as a fan of women's wrestling, because I am. I can sit there and watch men wrestle all day long, but if there's a woman's match, I, I want to see what they do. I want to pick it apart and I want to fix it. Yep if it's fixable. But you're very, very protective of the group and the unit, right? Mm -hmm. And even it's like when we were practicing during the pandemic, somebody yelled at me or something and they all just was like, I can't believe they did that to you. I'm so mad. I'm like, it's okay. It's fine. But y'all were taking up for me. That makes me feel good. It makes me feel like I'm doing something worthwhile. So let's talk about your photo shoot this weekend. How was it? <laughs> I thought it was a family photo shoot. Hey, we're going to have some pictures we can finally hang on our wall together. In your, bed, in your bedroom wall, probably. You wanted me in my cowboy hat, black muscle shirt, and some black jeans, right? Okay, I got it. Boom. We get there, they start doing makeup on her and stuff. And then she takes off her, her shirt, and I'm like, what's happening here? <laughs> what the, what's going on, Is babe? That and then she squats down right in front of me. She had a thong on, and then they start snapping pictures. I'm like, wait, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> What's going on here, honey? It looks like you're, you know. Oh, yeah. We did some, uh, some pretty cool poses, pretty cool stuff. That's love right there. Find, find somebody that is just as crazy as you. These two, how long have you guys been together now? We've been together since 2006. 2006, so it's been, oh my God, Brad is here. It's a long time. But you guys are so cute together. Yeah, she's my rock. Yeah, she is. And she keeps him in check. You're, you're my second rock. I'm the second one. You heard that? You are. Don't get jealous. I actually know you're a lot closer to you than any of the other girls. You heard that? Don't tell nobody. <laughs> But yeah, he has he has a school. It's oh, that's a your school called. Oh God, are we hustling now? Yes. Rhodes Wrestling <laughs> Academy, Academy in Austin, Texas. And you have two classes a year or four classes a year? I have three. Three, three, three. They're twelve week camps. Mm -hmm. Rhodes Wrestling Academy dot com. He takes applications every four months. Well, right. I'll take them right now if you get on there. Hey, there you go. Rhodes Academy. Rhodes. Rhodes Wrestling Rhodes Academy. Wrestling dot Academy com. Dot com. If you want to be a wrestler, talk Signed to this man. on by Mission Pro Wrestling. There you go. And with that, guys, 
I want to thank everybody for, you know, supporting this vlog. But, but yeah, guys, this, this guy is a, not, he calls himself a natural because he's a natural. He's a, a national, what do you call you? National treasure? A national treasure. You should have some respect for this man. And, um, and it happens to be my mentor and he's one of the people that I love the most. And there's a picture after my match when he's hugging me and he literally kissed me when I am like completely bloodied. And he- Love blood. He loves blood. I drink it. What are you, a vampire? Yeah, <laughs> I drink blood. But I just want to say that if he wasn't here, I don't know what would happen many times. I think I would have quit like 50,000 times. <laughs> Stop. When you're truly in love with something, yeah, it remains with you. I don't know Does what that it makes sense. Yes, but I don't know what I would have done without you. Here, you always believed in me. You're very special to me. I mean that. I'm gonna cry. Stop it. Why? Because it's very. This is very, a very special Good. moment. Yes. We're having a moment right now. You're very special <laughs> today. I, I, lo love, I love you to death. I love you too. Whatever these tacos are, don't <laughs> bring them next. <laughs> And with that, thanks for tuning in to Taco Vlog. Do not eat these tacos because they're dry as heck. But this is the only thing I've eaten today. Oh my God! And you got me dry ass chick. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you can't fake this, guys. You can't fake this. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dustin. And he's gonna eat this dry chicken. Well, what are we hustling now? Well, I don't know. What do you? What else are we gonna hustle? I'm thinking about starting an old league fans. For old people. Oldie? Oldie? I, I, I'm pretty sure you'll get some subscribers, like thousands. I'm not doing it. I'm just owning uh, Oh. Oh, by the way, my, one of my very good friends, she is, um, she's gay. She told me that because of you, when you were uh, gold dust, mm -hmm. she was able to develop a lot of her stuff in a positive way. And she loved, she loved you. She told me to tell you that. People tell me that a lot. Some, some people come up to me and say that like if they're gay or whatever, and help them get out of their little shell or what. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I'm glad I can do that to people. I'm glad I can inspire and help people with uh, certain issues. That is kind of probably what this is about, right? Yep. The wrestling's fun, but when you touch somebody's life, That's you're doing something right. You touch many lives and you touch mine, so. Make them feel something. He always says that. Make them feel something. Oh, yeah. Line number one. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, thanks for watching. I love you guys. See you next time. <laughs>